In this video, we are going to talk about how to integrate SonarCube with Jenkins. You may already be using one of the XUnit frameworks in your Jenkins pipelines to test your code, such as JUnit or NUnit. But now, your organization wants a central way to run and verify all of the tests. And guess what? Tag, you're it. You have now been selected to run a proof concept using Jenkins and SonarCube. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.289.3. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. To this controller, I have an agent attached. I also have a standalone SonarCube server. And finally, there's a sample repository that we're using today to work through our examples. There is a link to a gist down in the description that has all of the information about today's video. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to install a plugin to interact with SonarCube. The plugin isn't necessary, but it makes your life much easier in doing the integrations, and it also adds a feature that would be a lot harder for you to implement. So let's go to Manage Jenkins. We will go to Manage Plugins, go to Available, and type Sonar. And the plugin that we want is Sonar Cube Scanner. As of recording, the version is 2.13.1. We'll click on checkbox, download now, and install after restart. And once it's downloaded, we will do the restart. Okay, now we're back. Let's log in. And let's verify that the plugin is actually installed. So we'll go to Manage Plugins one more time. Click on Installed. And type Sonar again. We can see that Sonar Cube Scanner for Jenkins is installed. Now that we have the plugin installed, let's go configure it. The way we do that is we go to Manage Jenkins, Configure System, and let's scroll down to the Sonar Cube section. Now, the very first thing that we see here is environment variables checkbox. Let's go ahead and check that checkbox. Let's add a Sonar Cube server. I'm going to give it a name, and the name I'm going to give it is SQ1. You can just give it any kind of name that you want, but it's a name. My URL is copying from here. 192, 168, 1230, and port 9000. By default, the Sonar Cube server listens on port 9000. Now, you'll also notice that there is a server authentication token. At this point, we have not logged into Sonar Cube yet to create that token, so let's go do that now. So let's go over to our Sonar server. We're going to click on Administration. We are going to click on Security. And then we are going to go to users. And I have a local user named administrator or admin, and I want to add a token just to this user. So I'm going to go over here to the tokens column. I'm going to click on update tokens. I'm going to generate a token name. I'm just going to call it Jenkins. doesn't really matter the name, and I'm going to click on generate. And now I have this token shown to me, so I'm going to copy this. Okay, let's head back over to Jenkins and let's create that credential. So we'll say add Jenkins. This is gonna be a secret text type credential. The secret is what I have in my buffer. The ID, I'm just gonna call it Jenkins Sonar. And that's good enough. Then we will select it. And now we want to click on save. Now let's go ahead and create a test job and see what happens. We'll say new item. I'm going to call this Sonar, select Pipeline, click OK. And then Pipeline script from SCM, Git. Now let's go take a look at our repository, which we haven't looked at yet. So it's on GitHub. It's a public repository under my organization, Darren Pope, and then java-web-app. Now note that we are working on the Sonar branch right now. So taking a look at this, we have a Jenkins file 1 and a Jenkins file 2. 
Let's take a look at Jenkins file one first. We can see here that we're going to be using this step called with sonar cube env. And the installation name is sq1. Remember, when we set up our sonar cube configuration, we named it sq1. So this is where the sq1 is being used. And then within that, we are just saying maven w clean. And then we're making a call using the sonar maven plugin sonar. So if I had the Sonar plugin already installed with my version of Maven, then I could have just said clean Sonar Sonar. But since I'm bringing this in on the fly, I wanted a specific version of this Maven Sonar plugin, so I'm fully qualifying the plugin and its version. Okay, so let's go back up and grab our link. Go back over to our job, paste it in. We are working on the sonar branch. And then Jenkins file dash one. That's the first one that we're going to do. Click on save. Now let's click on build now. Let's watch build one. So it's injecting sonar cube environment variables. Let's get back to that. Injecting sonar cube environment variables using the configuration SQ1. Remember that checkbox that we added at the very beginning where we did the checkbox for environment variables? This is why this message shows up in the build log. Let's go and scroll down a little bit more. We are building from the internet, so it takes a little bit longer. Okay, now, here we go. When we actually run the sonar goal within Maven, we can see that it's making the call against the Sonar Cube version 901. That's the version of the Sonar server we have running. And then all of this output is happening with Sonar. So we can see here at the very end, everything was successful. It took about eight seconds, 7.7 .7 seconds to be exact, and then it completed. Well, let's take a look at our Sonar server now. Because if you remember, when we first came over, there were just a bunch of blocks and nothing had been set up. Let's click on Sonar Cube, and what we see now is Demo is here. And if we click into Demo, we can see that there was one security hotspot, 10 minutes of debt, one code smell, and everything passed. So this is good. This is what we wanted. Is Now we can come over into Sonar and take a look at our demo project. They have them defined as projects. And we can take a quick look and understand what's going on within our project. Now let's think back to our Jenkins file. We did a maven clean sonar colon sonar. Yes, it was a little bit longer, but effectively that's what it was. But that was basically just a fire and forget to sonar. What if we wanted to wait within our Jenkins file before moving on to maybe another step afterwards, but we wanted to make sure that a quality gate was passed within Sonar. The Sonar plugin gives us a step for that, but we have to make one more configuration change within Sonar to take advantage of that step. And that configuration is a webhook. So let's go back over into administration. We are going to go to configuration, and we're going to go to webhooks. We're going to create a webhook. I'm going to give it a name of Jenkins. The URL is going to be, copying it here, it's going to be my Jenkins server, which in my case is Jenkins colon 8080, and the Sonar plugin on Jenkins exposes a webhook called sonarcube-webhook. And I'm not going to supply a secret. Let's go ahead and click on Create. So as the project analysis completes, it's going to send a webhook back to our Jenkins server so we can continue on doing whatever it is that we're doing within our pipeline. In our Jenkins file dash one pipeline, we just ran Maven clean sonar sonar, and that was it. We didn't care. But we're getting ready to take a look at a different Jenkins file for this next example. So let's go up to our repository and let's take a look 
at Jenkins file two. And we can see here that we've got a two minute timeout and we're gonna wait for the quality gate. And if the quality gate does not pass, now this is not a video about sonar. So I'm gonna leave it up to you to do research and understand how you set up quality gates within sonar. But what I want to show you is I'm setting up a timeout for two minutes. That means I'm going to give sonar two minutes to either pass or fail based on the quality gate. If for some reason it comes back with a failing quality gate, this pipeline is going to abort. Or if it passes, it's going to just succeed and then complete. So let's go over back to our job and change our configuration from dash one to dash two. Click on save and then build now. They will track what's going on in two. So we're doing our Maven scan right now. Passed all of that information over. And then we can see here that it was checking on the status. It was in progress and then it was in a status of success and then it completed. And finally, the quality gate is okay. So therefore the pipeline finished successfully. So why should you integrate SonarCube with Jenkins? As we've already seen, SonarCube is an open source platform for continuous code quality monitoring. Among the many things that it does, it helps developers and testers find outdated dependencies, security vulnerabilities, and bad coding practices. By integrating SonarCube with Jenkins, we can automate the SonarCube processes to ensure that all of the code is inspected. The result is a higher quality code base because we have a safety net in place to catch any problems before they become production issues. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.